Meal prepping your breakfast rules because it means you can sleep in longer in the mornings. These sweet potato and sausage breakfast scrambles are simple to make and you can store them in your freezer to give yourself easy access to food in the morning. They'll save you money by not having to stop at Starbucks before work or buying the prepackaged stuff from the store. Jimmy Dean, never heard of her. Let's get to it. First, we need to make some breakfast sausage. You could just buy this at the store and they even sell it in pre-cooked crumbles in the freezer section. I'm going to make it though for demonstration purposes and a more macro-friendly option. Into a large bowl, add one pound or 454 grams of 93.7 ground chicken or ground turkey. To season it, add in one teaspoon or six grams of salt, one teaspoon or three grams of pepper, one teaspoon or three grams of onion powder, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or three grams of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon or three grams of paprika, one teaspoon or one gram of oregano, one teaspoon or two grams of ground sage, and one tablespoon or 12 grams of brown sugar. If you don't want this to be spicy, just leave out the cayenne pepper. Mix the contents of the bowl together using your hands to evenly distribute those seasonings throughout the meat. You can either cook this now or let it marinate for a bit in those flavors while you cut up the vegetables. For the vegetables, you'll need one large sweet potato or 500 grams worth. That's a little bit over a pound. Peel the potato and cut it into a small to medium sized dice. If you'd prefer bigger potato pieces, you could cut them larger, but it will take longer to cook them and may require you to boil or roast them first. Cutting them small allows you to cook them directly in the skillet and ensure they are soft throughout. Next, cut up one medium sized onion or 150 grams worth into a small dice. Then do the same with two medium green bell peppers or 300 grams. Any color of pepper is fine for this step. If you wanted some heat, you could also throw in a jalapeno or serrano pepper. Once your prep work is complete, get to cooking. I would work two burners on your stove to cook the meat and vegetables simultaneously to save time, but I'm going to do it one at a time since I only have this single shitbag induction burner available for the camera to see. Heat a large skillet over medium high heat and add in one tablespoon or 15 grams of oil. Place the meat in the pan and spread it out into an even layer. Don't start breaking it up right away because that will prevent it from developing the browning that we are looking for. Once it has had the chance to be in contact with that hot pan for a few minutes, then you can flip it over to the other side and start breaking it up a bit. When the underside has cooked and colored, you can continue to break it up into smaller pieces with your spatula and then move it onto a plate to set aside until later. For the vegetables, you'll start with the sweet potatoes first. Heat a large skillet over medium high heat and add in one tablespoon or 15 grams of oil and toss in your diced sweet potatoes. Give them a chance to brown up a bit on the heat and then drizzle over one to two tablespoons of water and cover the pan with a lid or whatever you can find in your kitchen that covers the top of your pan. The water will create steam inside and help cook the potatoes faster. If you cut them as small as I did, this could be as quick as a minute or two, so you'll want to check on them fairly quickly to make sure they aren't getting too mushy. When the potatoes are almost ready, you can create some room in the center of that pan and add in another 1 tablespoon or 15 grams of oil, then dump in your onions and peppers. Season everything lightly with salt and pepper. I've got a fan blowing the steam away from the overhead camera, so look at me play the wind like I'm a young Tiger Woods at Carnoustie. Get me on the tour! After the peppers and onions have cooked for a few minutes, mix everything together and then you can add back in the chicken sausage. If there's any water remaining in the pan from cooking the vegetables, allow that to boil off or get rid of it with a spoon before removing the pan from the heat. Get a taste test with a piece of sausage and each of the vegetables on your fork and adjust any flavors as you see fit. Before we plate this one up, we want to make sure that it is completely cooled so that no steam is going to enter the container we store it in. Remove it from the heat and allow it to cool down a bit and then you can even move it to the fridge to speed up the process. I'm going to get 8 servings from this, so once you're ready to plate, get out 8 of your storage containers. I'm using these 12 ounce glass mason jars. Divide the mixture out evenly between each of your containers. I used about 150 grams for each one. I would prefer to do this in regular shaped meal prep containers as it would help come reheating time, but I don't have enough of those containers or the space in my freezer to be able to fit all of them. The mason jars have a small surface area, so the microwaves only have that small target to hit when you reheat. A regular shaped meal prep container where it's more spread out will give you more even reheating. Once the mixture has been divided up into the containers, you can top it with cheese. Each container will get 2 tablespoons or 14 grams of shredded cheddar cheese, so you'll need 1 cup or 112 grams total. Here I am realizing that I'm not going to have enough cheese because the other night I got hungry around 2am and took one too many cheese pulls straight from the bag. Luckily for me, I have some sliced cheddar in the fridge so I'm just going to chop it up into shredded cheese and we're back to good. When each jar has been properly cheesed, they are ready for their caps. Lid them up and store them away. These are going in the breakfast district of Snack City, so if you need to make some room, do so and place in your containers. Of course, my jars were like a centimeter too tall, and I had to lay them on their side to fit, and if you're wondering if that's going to drive me crazy, it is. But whatever. 
These will last a month or two in the freezer and even longer if you store them in more airtight containers. Now when it comes time to eat, you can pull a container from the freezer and let it warm up a bit on the counter first. Going straight from the freezer into the microwave might not be the best idea with glass as rapid changes in temperature could cause that glass to break. So I'll leave the container on the counter for a few minutes first or put one in the fridge the night before. If you pack one of these containers in your bag and bring it to work or school, it will certainly be ready to be microwaved by the time you get there. First, I microwave it for about 30 to 45 seconds to loosen everything up so it can be stirred. If you have a container with more surface area, this is likely going to be easier to accomplish. Then I crack in one egg to the jar and mix it around to scramble. I know some of you are going to comment, only one egg? Yeah, eggs are currently $564,000 a dozen. That's a $47,000 egg. If you want to play Mr. Moneybags and use two, have at it. I'm also just not a huge breakfast guy, so one egg is plenty for me. Then I return the jar to the microwave for another minute to cook the egg. After that minute is up, stir the contents of the jar to make sure everything is evenly heating, and then return it to the microwave for another 30 seconds to a minute to finish cooking. Cook times may vary depending on the size of your container, and moving the jar around to a different spot of the microwave each time can help as well. If you're not into the idea of microwaved eggs, you could also reheat this in a skillet over the stove and just cook the eggs fresh. Once the egg is cooked, you are ready to eat. Each of these sweet potato and chicken sausage breakfast scrambles has about 330 calories and 22 grams of protein with one egg. With two eggs, you're looking at about 400 calories and 28 grams of protein. Another option would be to use 70 grams of liquid egg whites, which would bring your total down to 261 calories and 17 grams of protein. The full written version of this recipe is on my website and there's a link to it in the description below. Breakfast is too often overlooked when it comes to meal prep. I'm not a morning person in the slightest and I hate waking up early. Any time that I could save myself in the morning so that I could sleep in longer is something I'm looking to do. If you work an office job or are a student, these are great to toss in your bag and bring with you to work or school. You can heat them up and eat at your desk or in between classes. So if you hate mornings as much as me and like to sleep in, give these a go.